We'll start with Austin, then Noah. Come on, Austin. Give it to me. What you got? Coach, what have, what have you found in Jeremiah T. Lander this spring? Um, and how much have you seen him grow? Having T. Lander around has been great. Uh, seeing him literally grow and take steps each day. And, and that's something that we really try to do as a group. The biggest thing that he brings is he brings leadership, toughness, and the ability to really understand the system, the, the things that we've really liked about him thus far through 11 practices. Is he's been very, very, very calm and calming everyone down when the storm comes. And he knows he can put it on him to be the person who wants to be accountable and be the guy who's going to go out there and make the play. So we've definitely been pleased with him thus far in the spring. Coach, how do you feel, or what have you learned, I guess, the most about this group since you know, you took over? I know you got, I got a chance to meet him early on when we spoke to you, but just what have you learned the most about them in the last three weeks? Oh, that, that they're a very resilient group, and they love football. They love all the small, minute things that go into preparation. And when you see those guys coming in, knocking on my door, or, you know, coming from my office at 6 a.m., wanting to know what we're doing on this particular day or this given day, that's exactly what you want. They understand that uh, in order for you to be successful, you have to have a growth mindset. So we've seen that they've been able to live live by that and have that. And they know they want to be the best players on the team. And, and as I tell them, we're much is given, much is required. So that's what we have to be able to adhere to as linebackers. Rick up front. <clears throat> You said in a recent video that you have this philosophy of players teaching players, teammates teaching teammates, especially in the in the room. Why do you have that, and just where does that philosophy sort of come from? That's something that has probably been in me ever since my playing days. It's something that Hater Fry really instilled in the team. Something that they always said is that player-led teams will always be in positions to play for championships because if a player can lead a player, now you have what's called pure accountability. And you get indirect leadership from a player being able so if a player can lead, when those players become the leaders of the team, when we can sit back and make sure that the, the coaches run the program and the players run the team, you know your culture is where it needs to be when it comes to you being able to compete for championships. Between the Mike and Will, uh, how much do you want those to be interchangeable in terms of you know, your guys that never play both? Yeah, that, that's something that's, that's very big for us to make sure that you are interchangeable. We tell our guys that you have to be what's called a dual linebacker. You've got to know both scenarios because what we want to be able to do is in any given scenario, get the best guys on the field. And, and that's what we're doing. That's what we're recruiting. We're making sure that both guys can have the opportunity or the ability to be able to do both jobs. Goes back to your, back to your first spring finale here at UT uh, with the guys. And what are you looking to see from your, from your group on Saturday? Uh, just the, the, the element of consistent play. I, I think that's the one thing that you're always looking forward to on a day-to-day -day basis is making sure from a performance standpoint that that's consistent from us driving the defense, that that's consistent when we're at the point of attack, that we're making our plays as well. So that's kind of the biggest thing that we're looking to because, uh, again, we know that there's things that we have to do and things we have to accomplish, and we're just continuing to take steps as we grow each day in our spring for spring the spring finale would be just another one of those moments for us to go out there and show it. Reese in the back. Coach back here. Uh, how helpful is it to have an experienced guy like Keen Peely in your position group? That's awesome. When you have someone who has really been there and done that, that's exactly what you want in the room. Uh, he has an open mind for learning. And when you have someone who is a true veteran and understands football, like that, that, that's probably the best thing that we've learned about Keenan, is he really understands football. So him being able to do that on a day, a day in and day out basis and a play in and play out basis, that's something that really, really, really helps our defense. And we look forward to really pushing him to being one of the best linebackers in America. Ryan and Brent up front. Coach, I know he's not been out there uh, full, uh, full go basis yet, but what has been your impression of Barry on card so far? And what's he been able to get out of this spring? And we've seen him out there going through a lot of drills and just helping how he can. And what was he been able to get out of that? Yeah, right. Hear, hearing him is, is the biggest thing when you hear him on the sidelines. You can tell he understands football and knows some of the schematic things that we want. When you see him move, when we look at some of our player speeds and player loads, he's always one of the top guys up there from a movement standpoint. So we know we're going to get someone that's coming back that's probably even faster than all the guys that are currently in the room. And that's, that's what really has me excited. He is the one guy in the morning that is coming in every morning trying to get a, get a, a head start at, on, on what's going on today. What are we going to do? What's all in the install? Oh, hey, coach, I want to learn about both positions. It, it, it is awesome having a chance to really talk with him. And he is exactly what you want in your program. Coach, as you leave 
spring, what, what do you feel like your depth is and what's the biggest steps this group needs to take over the course of the offseason before you come back to office? Yeah, probably, um, I, I think as we come out of the spring, uh, we, we feel very good about our depth. And now, and, and you know you're probably going to get some more guys coming back, you know, that didn't have a chance to participate during the spring. So from a depth standpoint, you know, we, we feel pretty good. Now, when it comes to what you have to be able to do, the beauty of, of what we're doing now, we tell the guys, you have no idea how much more learning you're going to experience from the end of the spring to the beginning uh, of your game week. Because everything that we've done, they're going to go through it again two more times whether we go through our installs from a, from a scheme standpoint or whether they go at and actually get to rep it just from a repetition standpoint. So they're gonna be able to do everything a couple more times. So when, you, when they do that, now that will enhance their confidence. That will make their preparation level be a little higher. So that, that should be able to have, you know, it's some indirect improvements in their performances. Wes and Patrick. Yeah. A lot of times when people talk about Keenan Pugh, they talk about sort of his, you know, his personality, his maturity, all those things, his experience. How would you describe him as a player? Just what he's physically capable of doing in that position? Yeah, when you see him move around, uh, he definitely gets your attention because he is one of those linebackers that you love because he can run fast and hit hard. He's very explosive. He can get off the ground. Uh, he can bend his pads. He can get low. Uh, so he does everything that you want a linebacker to do. And you combine that with him kind of being Uncle Grandpa is awesome. Patrick, up for right here. Coach, uh, you, you got here really close to spring ball. How do you feel like the, uh, the process of building relations with your guys? How do you feel like they've accepted you? And what are some things maybe you've done off the practice field to sort of uh, maybe expedite that, that sort of trust between you and, and your players? Yeah, I, I think that process has been <coughs> one thing that we, we always have to be about on our end. As coaches, as mentors, as teachers, and as leaders, we have to be about relationships. So on our end, we, every day we start off something that you want to improve on, something that you're doing for your family, or something you're doing to help someone else, just to see how other-centered everyone can be. And then we all we always kind of have a one-on-one -on -one meeting where we're just learning about each other. Hey, tell me a little bit about your family. Tell me a little bit about you, and I'll tell them about myself. And that's kind of how our bond has really gotten really strong over the last four weeks. Has it gone better than maybe you thought it would? Yeah, you know, I guess I would like to say that would be one of my strengths uh, when it comes to being able to build relationships with guys. And, and I think that the reputation from where I'm coming from, I think when they push play and saw some of the film, because those guys, they go back and they look at all of the film on YouTube and everything, and they saw how the linebackers played and some things where we, they would see some interactions. So they could see that as well. So when they saw that, and now they're actually getting that on a day-to-day -day basis. It just increases their, their level of, of buy-in, and, and as, as well as mine, because I see them wanting to get better. And that's what motivates me as a coach. When you see a player that wants to be as good as he can be, and he is going to do everything he can to try to make sure that he is going to be the guy. Eric? You were asking about uh, Harry Carter a moment ago. What about Elijah Herring? I know he's not been able to go full contact. What has he done now in the spring, and what's the next step? I would, I would say the same thing that we talked about with Ariane, uh, with, with Elijah, seeing his growth just from understanding football. Uh, the, the one thing we try to be is just, we want to make sure we're great teachers. So when they're in the meeting, there are some times we let them run the meeting. Because again, we talk about the player-led scenario. So when a player could run the meeting in front of their peers, uh, yes, I'm going to make sure that I help them, but it's going to give them confidence. But also it gives me the ability to be able to meet with them kind of one-on-one. -on -one. So when I could hear uh, Elijah come in and talk about some of the things from today's install or for today's install, I could be able to help lead him, but also I see where he is in his learning. So seeing him really grasp a lot more things to help him be uh, a little higher from a football understanding standpoint, it, it is awesome, man. We can't wait to get him back because he's one of those guys that, that has a lot of sweat equity. By that, he's been on the field playing in the battlefield, and we can't wait to get him back for sure. Paige in Austin. Patrick, you mentioned that Keenan Feely is kind of like that uncle, granddad. How does that experience help you embody the player-led mentality that you have? It's awesome because when you're the leader, now you have to go out there and do it. Uh, the, the one thing we talk about in our room is leadership is best coupled with action. So when you see someone who is acting it out, everybody wants to follow. And, and, and it is perfect. And now we have to give him things to just work on on it from a day-to-day -day basis but he is really embodying exactly what you want from a leadership standpoint. 
maybe not on the field coach, but off the field, who, who reminds you in your room of you as a player? You said off the field? Off the field. Off the field. Yeah, you know what? I would probably say Caleb Perry. You know, someone who has a, a uh, spiritually motivated, uh, someone who is really, really, really about preparation, and someone who is growing and taking steps in the program. Because that's what we all had to do. We all had to develop and go work. And that's what he's about. He's about working and doing exactly what he's supposed to do. So it motivates me to really make sure that he can be at his best on any given moment. Last one. Spillman got here right as spring ball started. <laughs> what 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 have you seen from him? How how much has he been able to learn in, in four weeks? Kind of what do you think of his skill set? Yeah, the one thing about him, it, it, it's exactly what you want from a coaching mentality because well, I'd rather say woe and sick him. You, you you do not have to say sick him to him because he is all about physical contact being at the point of attack and wanting to be, wanting to go hurt someone. That's exactly what you want as from a young player. Now what we have to do is just continue to get him guided on understanding the jobs from a play in play out scenario. As a young player, you know, when you come in kind of right at spring ball and starting, I mean, you talk about drinking from a fire hose. Like so I was trying to turn it down, but it, it was still going on all over the place. He couldn't even see. But so, so we were trying to tell him exactly what to do. And then as you got from one day to the next day, you could just see him just continuing to take steps. So we feel he has a bright future. He, he is going to be someone everyone is going to know about here in, in five months. All right. Thank you, Coach.